As we approach the end of the Torah, I hope we can all make one last reflection on our why, on the most important questions of who we are and what our lives are about, and also how Torah can fit into our asking and answering of those questions. When we face difficulties on the journey of actualizing our unique purposes, where will we turn for stability and guidance? What sort of an entity is Torah anyway? What sort of a teacher or guide or friend? I believe that Parsha Tazinu, nearly at the end of the Torah, provides an opportunity to unsettle patterns we may have fallen into in our relationship to the Torah and surprise ourselves with new ways of relating to her. Parsha Tazinu is a special Torah portion in that it is primarily written not as prose, but in the form of a sheer, a poem, or a song. Just looking at the unusual spacing of the text, we can see that the Torah is doing something different here. In this atypical Parsha, we today get to hear Moses singing a love song to Torah itself, a love song that also is Torah itself. Ha'azinu, give ear, he begins at the start of Deuteronomy chapter 32. O oh, heavens, let me speak. Let the earth hear the words I utter. Moses continues the poetry. May my discourse come down as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like showers on young growth, like droplets on the grass. This introductory stanza serves as a call to soak in and imbibe the instructions of the Torah. And perhaps it's a further call to, like Moses, sing our own songs as we journey on in our lives. Why does Moses need to sing us Torah, not just speak it? What does it mean for us to have the Torah that is poetry? How do we live lives in song as well as in prose? Our lives' songs are our deepest expressions of our values and purpose in the world. When we experience an encounter that takes us beyond ordinary feelings, we can find satisfactory expression only in song. We sing because it's the outpouring of our souls, the Jewish musician Joey Weisenberg once said. We fill up our cup, and then when the cup overflows, it overflows in song, and we sing to give thanks back to the world. Let us allow Parsha Ta'azinu to teach us to find those moments and those places where we can submerge deep into our own emotional truths, and where when we can allow our abundant wellsprings of humanity to overflow the bounds of thought and sense out into our own necessary mysterious music. But what's even more powerful than singing our own song is learning how to sing as a community. We must learn to not only provide space for each member to sing their own song, but to create a collective harmonious chorus, a, symp a symphony, even of many different voices together. Batya Levine, another contemporary Jewish musician, said in a conversation with Eliana Light on the Jewish Lab podcast, I often refer to it as the voice of the kahal, the collective voice that feels like nothing else. It feels like an intimacy with Hashem, an intimacy with each other, and an intimacy on an individual level that can all be happening at the same time. And it feels imminent and transcendent in some way where sometimes I'm like, oh my goodness, this voice is beautiful. And in other moments, I'm deep inside of it. And to me, it feels like a way to process pain and grief and stuckness. It feels like a way to pray for what is in our heart. It feels like a way to be in the beauty of life and a way to experience aliveness. And I think because it can be so many different things, that's part of the magic and power of it. And it's not theoretical. It's also very physical and embodied. We're literally vibrating our, ourselves and vibrating each other. Sometimes after I've sung with a group and it felt really potent, I'll just feel undulating energy in front of me or tingling. And that's, and that's not a super normal experience for me in the rest of my life. And I'm like, okay, something's moving, something's happening. Something might be healing or releasing that I can't understand. I don't really need to, but I do trust that something is happening. Joining together in song and Bhatti Levine's evocative description is a paramount example of the potential for fullness of life and integration in community. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory passed on a teaching of the Baal Shem Tov, 
that just as one missing letter makes an entire Torah scroll unkosher, one missing Jew makes the entire Jewish people incomplete. Every Jew is a letter, Rabbi Sachs wrote in his book, a letter in the scroll. Each Jewish family is a word, every community a sentence, and the Jewish people through time constitutes a story, the strangest and most moving story in the annals of mankind. To truly embrace this grand vision, we must strive for pluralist values, experiences, community, and learning. By leaving the comfort of our own denominations, congregations, ideologies, and echo chambers, and learning Torah together, we form the polyphonic symphony of Torah, of human life. Together, full of contradictions and tensions, and surprising harmonies, we can sing a more beautiful song. The prophet Jeremiah describes the people of Israel accusatorily, mournfully, tragically, as scattered sheep. But the sages look deeper into the prophet's language and transform its message. In an early midrash, they say about this verse that Israel is likened to a sheep. What's the nature of a sheep? If a sheep is injured in one limb, the whole body feels it. So too Israel, if one of them is hurt, all of them feel it. <clears throat> if we are like sheep, we are not a scattered herd, isolated from one another, not even a unified herd, but rather <coughs> we must all be parts of the same single sheep, the same organism, mutually interdependent as organs of a single body and feeling one another's pain and joy. Nor is it only the Jewish people who are unified in our choral song, nor even only the human population. As it says in Psalm 96, one of the famous psalms recited at Kabbalat Shabbat, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Singing a new song is a task of the entire earth. Just as Moses in Hazinu calls on the heaven and the earth to hear his song, Psalm 96 goes on to summon the prayers of the entire natural world. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth exult. Let the sea and all within it thunder, the fields and everything in them exult. Then shall all the trees of the forest shout for joy. Everyone and everything must be redeemed by elevation to its highest purpose, by mutual, systemic, interdependent elevation together to our highest purpose, to the highest purpose. Wait a minute. If the song is meant to be communal, symphonic, why does the song of Hazinu seem to be a solo by Moses? The verse before the portion is, so Moses spoke in the ears of the entire assembly of Israel the words of the song until they were ended. Perhaps he had one backup singer, Joshua, because in the end we read, Moshe came and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people, he and Hosea, son of Nun. Where is the voice of the Kahal, as Bati Levine calls it? In Dr. Aviva Gottlieb Zornberg's insightful reading of Moses and the people's relationship, the book of Deuteronomy contains a silent plea from Moses to the people to pray to God for him as he has prayed to God for them. Dr. Zornberg painfully concludes that Moses' desire remains unheard. Overtones of disappointment permeate his story. Perhaps Moses wants, in this final stage of his interaction with them, to generate in them a sense of how his life is bound up with theirs, his prayers and in theirs. At that time he was in their hands, perhaps he in some sense remains in their hands. He intimates his susceptibility to them, to their desires, to their prayers. He is affected by them in ways that are difficult for them to grasp. She says, Moses' desire for their desires left unassuaged. In effect, they confirm his isolation. But perhaps the story does not end there. At the conclusion of the portion, Hazinu, we read, and when Moses finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, take to heart all the words with which I have warned you this day, and join them upon your children, that they may observe faithfully all the terms of this teaching. For this is not a trifling thing for you. It is your very life. The call, the desire, the plea for us to join together in song, in our song, in the song of Torah, is ongoing in every generation. Moses' desire is for us, too, to join him in the song of Torah. About an earlier song, the song at the sea, Dr. Zornberg has written, Beyond the words of the song that Moses authors, there's, there is the residue of what cannot yet be sung not yet, sustains the intuition of ultimate possibility. 
Moses' intention of a future song emerges from his specific experience of speechlessness and song. There are songs that will yet find words. With the Torah, we today are possessors of not just a sacred book, but a holy song. The priceless wisdom we have inherited includes not just laws and stories and lessons, but also the vulnerability and power of overflowing emotional truth. May this Torah draw us together as vibrations seeking out resonances and as voices seeking out harmonies. Shabbat Shalom.